Hello everyone! I am here to share with you a video I've waited for myself for so long, but no one ever made it, so here I am to make it. Anyone who has been a fan of Mark knows that he has concocted a brilliant cinematic universe of his alter egos and other original characters, but it has been so thoroughly placed in such a deep-rooted and thoughtful manner that it genuinely has taken strenuous amounts of brain power and time to figure out how things are connected. But, now, without further ado, this is my official Markiplier Connected Universe Timeline. Most obvious of all, it starts with who killed Markiplier. It is the origin story of debatably the most important characters in the entirety of the Markiplier Connected Universe. I'm going to sum up the story of this, even though to a lot of people, these are the bare basics of the story to come. In this section of the story, Markiplier is murdered, and everyone in the house is trying to find the culprit. Along the way, you find out things aren't exactly what they seem in this house. The house is a supernatural entity that is able to transport souls in a very weird manner and has some very strange and unspecified but strong powers. Mark, knowing this, kills himself, knowing that it would bring Celine to the house so that he could use her own seer abilities against her. The reason he would want to do that is because the Colonel stole Celine's heart from him. Celine, my heart still beats for her to this day. But if she saw me, she'd probably carve mine out. <laughs> so he wants to take revenge on his leaving wife and Damien as well, presumably, given he is her brother and there are newspaper clippings of some drama between them shown later on. But before anything is able to be concluded, the house lights a bright, blinding white. As it's later revealed during this time, Mark is stealing Damien's body and shoved Celine and Damien's souls into the house's sort of limbo. Us, the player, see as the colonel finds all of the dirt the detective has been digging, and out of a fit of rage of being accused of murder and being taunted by the detective with the knowledge of him and Celine's affair, he shoots the detective. Later being revealed, the detective survives the shot. But right after the detective gets shot, the colonel accidentally shoots us as well. This sends the player into the house's limbo, as we meet Celine and Damien, who offer to help us go back to the world of the living using our body. As we awaken, we see the colonel, sitting over our body, utterly baffled as we stand up. Now viewing death as meaningless and a joke, thinking nothing is real anymore, he goes on to become the infamous Wilford Warpstash. As he leaves the room, losing his sanity even more, the player, Damien, and Celine walk to a mirror, grabbing the cane that was the mare's, then looking up and walking away, leaving the player's soul in limbo, revealing that Darker Plier is Damien and Celine's souls fused together living with only one purpose, to take down Mark. Well, hope that wasn't a lot of information shoved down your throat, because that's the simple stuff. It only gets more complex from here, and as I'm writing the script, I'm hating myself for wanting to do this video a little bit more by the word that I type. So without further ado, let's move on to the next part of the timeline. <laughs> Next up in the timeline is Wilford Motherloving Warpstash. This takes place supposedly three years later after the events of Who Killed Markiplier, but in reality it takes place directly after Who Killed Markiplier because reality is but fiction, but only Warpstash understands this. It follows the detective who has been trying to find Warpstash ever since Who Killed Markiplier, believing he's still the murderer. He eventually finds Warpstash at a party where Warpstash doesn't recognize him at all and the detective tases him and captures him. As the detective tries to question Warpstash, he recognizes who he is, finally. Abe. Abe. Abe, it's been years. How are you? How are you doing? How's the family? After coming to the realization, Warpstash somehow starts teleporting around the room when he goes off camera, reminiscing on the old times while also mentioning things that haven't happened yet. Oh, the train. Oh, I remember the train. How long were we stuck in the snow for? What? Oh, you don't remember? That's ah, okay, probably hasn't happened yet. But some of your finest work, I have to say. During this, the detective starts losing his temper because his big moment he's worked on for so long is being ruined and he doesn't understand anything that's going on. As he yells at Warpstash, Warpstash starts to realize that the detective doesn't know what he knows. So he asks the detective, 
What would you say our, uh, our closest encounter was before this very moment right here? And the detective scrounges for an answer, but he can't remember. Orfstash then also asks, uh, uh, th With, uh, Three years, uh, what year was that exactly? And the detective defeatedly can't remember. The detective sits down, wondering why he can't remember any details about anything, and asks, Am I crazy? Orfstash jumps to answer the detective and says, No, 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 no. My friend, you are not crazy. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you're crazy. The detective tells Warfstash that it's impossible to know things that haven't happened yet, to which Warfstash agrees and tells the detective, Yes, exactly. Just like it's impossible to survive a bullet through the heart. In this moment, the detective's gunshot wound returns to his chest as the reality of the situation starts affecting the world around them. But before the detective can drift off back into his role as a detective, Worfstash snaps him out of it. Worfstash, knowing that the reality of their existence is too much to explain at once without breaking him, rewinds them back to the party that they were at earlier, to which he says, Why don't we have a little fun? Worfstash is trying to ease the detective into reality, because Worfstash knows what it's like to figure it all out at once, and now Worfstash is as broken as he is. The biggest thing to hammer onto during this is that even after everything we see, Worfstash doesn't even have the faintest clue himself of exactly what's happening. Markiplier specifies this himself in his breakdown video that Worfstash can't even control what's going on himself. He simply is just rolling with the reality of his situation, moving on and traveling throughout time and videos as he does. It is never quite specified how he got to this point of his insanity, to where he breaks reality itself, but I hope it is specified one day, because I would like to see that. Welp, only like six more projects to get through. Let's go! So Damien is a very weird and unspecified case that you need to watch why killed Markiplier to fully understand, I feel. But as the basis before summarizing this part of the story, it needs to be specified that this takes place in a miniature narrative that Celine made to keep Damien safe. This takes place in the body of the player in Who Killed Markiplier, but time moves differently in this narrative. This starts off with Damien grabbing some firewood for the winter, then after getting the wood, going home to a shed with Celine. After some back and forth and talking about a flower, Celine tells Damien he needs to get some sleep. Damien sleeps, but then is shown immediately back in the woods getting firewood. This is showing that he's in a loop, always getting firewood, then coming back to the shed. But things are different this time. In the distance of the woods, Damien hears lines from Wilfred Mother Loving Warpstash, such as, well, why'd the music stop? You until people! So many people! But after hearing this, he decides to just go home after he gets his wood. Damien and Celine talk, and then she leaves the shed. But soon after she leaves, things aren't as they should be. Damien starts to see visions of himself as a corpse in the mirror, then he's transported to a forest where he hears Celine crying for help. He follows these cries until he's at a frozen lake where he sees someone under the ice. He smashes through it and pulls someone up, but the person ends up being another vision of himself as a corpse, and he's pulled into the water. Next thing he comes to when he sees the actor Mark, but it takes him a bit to recognize him because Celine had suppressed all of his memories. After some back and forth, the actor Mark goes on and talks about his plan from Who Killed Mark Applier and how it succeeded and failed in ways. He then talks about how the world around him is just a, a never ending starring role as the hero. But what is a hero without a villain? Damien, baffled by the statement, asks, You honestly think? You're the hero in all of this? Which is swiftly replied with, <laughs> Well, of course I am. Who else could I possibly be? Then Mark says to Damien, You are going to make the perfect villain in my story. After he says that, the two of them start yelling back and forth, blaming each other for the situation that they're in. Then, after it all calms down, Mark tries to make Damien wake up, in air quotes. But before he can succeed, Celine busts through the wall that Mark made to separate them from the other narrative, and then she throws an axe directly into the actor Mark, in which he teleports away because he has a real body to go out to, out of this realm. After everything happens, Celine watches as Damien slowly puts together everything that happened, asking, Am I... 
in my bed. No! No. And this absolutely devastates Celine because after everything she's done to protect him, she failed. But as she tried to take it upon herself to take down Mark and put everything back as it was, Damien snaps and screams, Love. Let me help you! I remember now. I remember what he did. What we did. At this moment, he remembers everything from who killed Markiplier. And he tells Celine, who has been trying to take care of everything herself up to this point. You look tired. I think you need to get some sleep. And then after her narrative comes crashing down, it jumps to reality, where we see the official perfect fusion and creation of Darkiplier. A really important thing to specify that Mark says in his analysis video is that the reason the narrative starts to fall apart in the first place is a result of Wilford's tampering and unfolding of reality. It's not on purpose, but as Wilford starts to break reality more and more, the effects ripple far and wide, causing stuff as such as this to happen. Damn! This is gonna be a long video. Hope you're enjoying the torture I'm going through piecing everything together for you all. Uh, on to the next one! So this seems really, really goofy, but it's official. Mark explains in the Damien Explained video that it's canonical that right after Damien, Wilford just sort of appears after Darkiplier leaves the shack, to which this conversation occurs. It's like total cut to black and then Warstaff comes in like, Oh, there you are, Damien. I've been looking all over for you. And then, uh, like, uh, like Damien's like, oh, I will, or whatever he fucking does. And then uh, Wilford's like, uh, something along the lines like, uh, <laughs> Do you, do you, you haven't seen Celine around anywhere, have you? I don't know. If, she, if I can avoid her, I'd rather do it. And then Damien would be like, she's sleeping. And then Wilford would be like, uh, like, oh, good. Oh, good. Great. All right. Well, anyway, I'm glad I found you. I, I got a great new idea. Uh, we're going to make a TV show. And like, <laughs> there was going to be this long pause before Dirk went, okay. <laughs> Just like... Cut to Markiplier TV. Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> also, since we're talking about this, this means it's a good time to remember that there's still so many other alters Mark can use at any moment. A great example is the fact that he even added on to the Google Plier lore a while ago, yet everyone seems to forget about that. It's been a long time since any other alters have gotten spotlight besides Starkiplier and Wilford, but personally, I really want an update on Google Plier or the host. So enjoy that knowledge, and now we're going to move on to the next part of the timeline. And this was the worst one to put together. This seems like a weird place to put it, but I swear, this makes the most sense. I need you to understand that this time travels a lot, and this project, while amazing, made me want to commit atrocities when it came to placing it in a timeline. <sighs> But it's time to stop stalling and start summarizing. In Space with Markiplier takes place in, believe it or not, SPACE! You, Engineer Mark, and the rest of your crew are transporting hundreds of thousands of people to a new planet to colonize. But on the way there, a wormhole forms in the middle of the ship and then things go insane from there. You wake up and the status of the ship is absolutely catastrophic. Mark suddenly gets sucked out of the window before you can close it and then you try to go out and fix the ship. From this point on, if you die, you get sent to another universe where things are either slightly different or extremely different. This is a good time to note that every time that you die, your ship explodes, meaning that every time that you fail, you doom hundreds of thousands of people to death. But because there are so many different things that you can do, the main thing to take away from the three plus hours of content that it that is trying to make it to the core is that by the end, the universe starts resetting after an old version of Engineer Mark spends his life thinking you caused the millions and millions of deaths from all over the multiverse on purpose. So old man Mark tries to reset everything, putting everything back into its place. Then, starting in space with Markiplier 2, nothing is better. In fact, it's worse. The wormhole is starting to make things just incomprehensible at this point. Eventually, the player runs into Old Man Mark, who realizes that it was all an accident and that you aren't really the enemy. Then he realizes something, but never specifies what exactly. 
He tells the player, before he transports into another universe again, to stop him from going back. Don't let himself in the past to try and fix everything. Then after a lot more random gags and goofs and finding out more about the situation, you inevitably find yourself in the room with young Engineer Mark, who it turns out built the core, thinking he rebuilt it. You get faced with the option to stop him or let him go, but stopping him from going back fixes everything, because if he never goes back in time, the core doesn't recognize a paradox, and then doesn't disappear. Now, there's a lot that can be theorized about here, especially since the 10 years of Markiplier livestream, but that's not my job for this video. The thing that makes me place this here in the timeline is two things. At the very end of the credits, you see Darkiplier grabbing the glowing gem, which was used to transport between all of these universes, which immediately leads to the events of a heist with Markiplier, because the gem used to power the core is the same gem on the artifact that causes the object inside the box to change every time that a different situation comes to fruition. And also, Mark mentions finally asking you out on a date, which then in a heist with Markiplier, it's confirmed that he's already asked you out, and then afterward would be a date with Markiplier. But this is all just speculation based on different evidences. The placing of In Space with Markiplier is always going to be janky due to all the time travel, so this is the best that I can give you. But I've kind of already spoiled what comes next, so next is... Weirdly enough, I think that this can't be truly summarized because there are so many endings with no straight-lined path of story. But essentially, you do a heist with Markiplier, and the box you get, fueled by the gym from In Space with Markiplier, gives you whatever you need the moment that you open it, sort of. If you want to know more, watch it for yourself. It's seriously too many paths to be able to explain. But basically the reason this is placed here in the timeline is because it's after Dark gets the gym. And after one of the endings, Mark says, you, uh, want to go on that date? Meaning after this is... Ah, uh, a date with Markiplier. An original on the Markiplier channel. So, this also doesn't have a linear story, so it cannot be properly summarized, but there are two endings that matter in this. In one of the endings after Mark proposes to you, it's shown that Everything is a set, and everyone was just actors, and Mark is shown as a pretty hateful person in this ending. Like, this is the real him. It's safe to say this is the actor Mark. Now, I'm not saying that Mark in all of A Date with Mark a Player is the actor Mark, just that in this ending, it's him. The Mark you go on a date with in every other ending is a character brought to life by the actor Mark, because reality in Mark's universe is fiction. Making a story makes it real, just like how in Damien, Celine made her little piece of fiction to hide Damien from the harsh reality of their situation. But then there's also the Darkiplier ending. Darkiplier essentially tries to hijack Mark's date, and then Mark tackles him before he steals you, and they fight a bit, followed by Dark dropping a gun, and then you get to choose to shoot the one on the left or the right. But here's the main point. In this, you literally have an ending where you shoot Darkiplier. Now, I don't know, maybe we could see him again chronologically after this because he's literally two souls piloting a dead body, but theoretically, the big showdown people have been wanting between Dark and Mark could be this, making this, at least for now, the last in the timeline. So there's a lot of things that can be theorized about, but that's not what this video is about. This video has taken so much of me already skimming all of the Markiplier Explains Everything streams to make sure I understand everything correctly to explain it to you all. So if you want a theory video, please give this one a like first and then I'll think about it. But if anyone watching this has not watched In Space with Markiplier yet, do it. It's amazing and it's a fun project all for free here on YouTube. I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't think it was worth it. But for a second, I want to be real with you all. Markiplier is an amazing writer and a major inspiration to me, and I love the way he writes his characters and universe so much. I have been trying to put together everything I can about this universe of characters since, like, seventh grade, and now I'm about to head college, so it's been quite some time, but I've loved it. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and this is about it. I just wanted to help people understand the storyline. So yeah, it's been an honor, and I'm shaking your hand, and goodbye. You're, um, you're still here.
Uh, it was kind of awkward. You were supposed to click off, and then, you know, another video, preferably one of ours, was supposed to play. Um, how's it going? Uh, you watch Force Betrayal yet? Don't. It's a bad video. Hate it. Um, you can move along now. Yeah, um, hope you're having a good time. Can you please leave? <laughs>